In this video, you will learn why your job is meaningless, while corporate, why corporate culture is completely fake, and why you should understand how having a pointless job, which most jobs are, in the white collar work, um, you should just accept it, you should care less about your work and how you can strategize around it. I myself am someone who has worked for over 10 years in the finance industry, Goldman's, HSBC, Morgan Stanley and so on, um, in the investment banking and sales and trading type of roles. And this guy, who you see on your screen right now, has worked in Boston Consulting Group, which is a major management consultancy firm within the um, professional world. He's also worked at Google. So he's got a good um, balance of experience between myself and him for over 10 years I've worked. I think he's worked for about 10 years or more. And we're gonna learn a few points of what key lessons you can learn about the fake corporate culture and how to leverage it to benefit yourself and your income. Uh, performance reviews and so on. My advice is to care less about that, that perfect result <clears throat> and fairness and, and things, that, things that, that are self-evident, things that you, you, know, you value. Uh, it's a terrible thing to say, but, but if you think about it, you, you've put yourself voluntarily, by getting into a large company, you've put yourself into an authoritarian regime voluntarily. They, it is a bit of a, a fiefdom all around, like um, serfdom or a dictatorship where, you know, orders come from the top down and everybody is, is basically pay, paid to say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. So before we continue here, it's very interesting is that when we go into corporate environments, people like me, and I'm sure many people who watch this is you want to, well, you've worked your, you've studied hard to get to that level. You maybe worked at other roles and you want to pursue your career on the basis of competency and meritocracy or fairness and fair treatment. But the corporate world completely doesn't work in that way. I've learned from working at those top companies I mentioned before. And so has he, right? We have a similar life experience. Um, you should care less about fairness, understand competency, meritocracy, meritocracy get thrown out the window. And when you do work for a company, it really is run like a dictatorship, right? People tell you what to do, even if you know the work is pointless, even if you know the work is meaningless, it adds no value, it's very inefficient, you just got to do it to collect your paycheck, right? It is very authoritarian, you are in a surf type position, there is a serfdom dynamic because you have no freedom, particularly if you don't have a second income, you are very dependent on your high power corporate job as your main source of income. So if they give you completely unreasonable demands, you've got to play along with it because you need to pay your mortgage, pay for your living costs, right? And people become too dependent on them if you don't have multiple income sources, which I recommend you do through my career coaching service, right? And what you should understand is when you're in the corporate environment, you should see yourself literally, like you mentioned, as a surf, you don't have a freedom, you don't have lots of freedom even to have your own opinion and you've got to play along with a lot of these bizarre type of ideologies that they push forward. But you should see yourself like you have a court, like the king's court, like they had back in the day, many centuries ago, and you're, you're like the jester or the joker character uh, on the deck of cards. And you're kind of playing along with this kind of fake environment, the same way the jesters and the servants in the king's court, in a king's palace, would play along with, with whatever ridiculousness was going on, just to survive and make their income. That's how you should see yourself in the corporate environment, rather than taking the work seriously. See the work as a bit pointless, because it is. You're just there to play along with the charade that would be in a king's palace, or that would be in a corporate authoritarian company. Your say, your part in this whole machine is very small. It doesn't matter. If you don't show up to work tomorrow and you, you work in a large company, nobody really cares. And that's by design. It's by design that we have this, this redundancy, that you are a cog in a, in a huge machine that you have very little influence over it. No, I'm not talking, if, you know, if you're super ambitious and you want to get into the C-suite and all of that, it still works. But if you're you know, going to work and, and you're getting frustrated and you are intelligent and you are looking around at all the dummies around that are not making the right decision, that is by design. So that's the important thing. You should see yourself like a small cog in a machine, right? And many people don't want to accept that because it makes yourself feel small and you realize how big this system is in terms of controlling your life. Firstly, you're deliberately replaceable because many of those jobs, they know people are going to stick around for three to five years given that there's no major salary increases and that the job will be a very small specific task in that company. Nothing that could destabilize the company if you disappear tomorrow. So you're deliberately replaceable in that way. 
if you're intelligent, you could kind of get frustrated. You could think, oh, you know what? I want to work hard. I want to succeed. But you're really given a very small, inconsequential kind of role. And there's a reason for that, right? And just to add to that, any dummy, midwits, mid IQ, low IQ co-workers, the NPCs, the normies, however you want to talk about them, they will typically thrive in those type of roles because they just see themselves as they kind of lack consciousness. They lack awareness of where they are in the grand scheme of things. They just get along, get on with these type of pointless work tasks. So in order for you to survive around them, you have to kind of play along with that. And what you should understand is that consensus is more important than being correct. And what I mean by that is it's not so much about you coming to the correct conclusion and you know finding the best, most efficient solution. What it is is about different departments, that say the trading, sales teams, the risk teams, compliance, um, audit teams, all being on the same page with a particular narrative, a particular approach, the tech teams, finance, operations, all of those. So consensus is more important than what's correct. And so many times the consensus opinion will be something that is incorrect, that is inefficient, that is not the right answer. But if you try to push for the right answer, it doesn't matter. Just go along with playing the characters and playing along with the charade because it's more about the charade than being correct, right? Everything's about one big theatre show that they call a work environment. And... Um, that's just simply what it is, right? And many smart people, they struggle with this because you have higher IQ levels and you think, oh, well, can't we have this super efficient workplace and work environment? And it isn't. It's deliberately inefficient for those reasons, right? To keep these NPCs in their jobs, to keep this system functioning and chugging away, even if it is inefficient. Because if you really think about it, so many work tasks could be done efficiently. And in a sense, there could be mass unemployment. And if the system ran efficiently, then people would have free time to live out their life how they want. But the system doesn't want that. The system wants people stuck in a in a form of wage debt slavery where they have these overpriced mortgages, they have these high paying jobs, but they have kind of low living standards that have been crushed by inflation and things like that because the system needs to, to, to feed, throw people headfirst into the kind of wood chipper to, to work, work away for really inefficient jobs that don't pay that well in the grand scheme of things. Now, it's very important at this point for you to realize that, you know, it's more important to be ruthless in a workplace environment and be not care uncaring than to be smart, right? To have corporate success, it's all about playing along with that charade. And you should be a cog that makes the machine work in a sense, right? And a good example of this, there are in the professional wrestling industry, WWE, WWF, as I'm sure you're aware of some of that, the John Cena, Stone Cold Steve Austin, these were the top names in the company. But even at that level, and they're making millions of dollars and never have to work again after doing that job for 10 to 20 years, right? They would see themselves as cogs in the machine. And there's a side reference. I remember seeing a documentary um, where they were interviewed and they would say these things. Oh, they're a cog in a machine. They understand the system keeps going and that they are replaceable and they are replaceable. And they had new stars that come in after that. Roman Reigns, people like that. But the point is, if they see themselves as disposable, then so, so should you, in a sense. You should see yourself as like, oh, well, they could, if they can get rid of a John Cena, who's worth you know, millions and millions of dollars to a company's brand, they can do that easily with you. And if they see you as disposable, don't care too much about the work. Just get the work done. Pretend to be fake nice and, and leave and get on with your life. So why do I say making connections? Because nobody gets promoted based on their productivity. Okay? Nobody gets promoted because they come to the right answers. No. And I mean everybody gets promoted because somebody says, let's promote Joe. That's it. It's either that somebody is either an individual who has that power or a group that has that power, if, if it's a promotion committee or something. So the whole game is to get them to say, yes, if you're looking for promotion. But even that is a farce. So that is a carrot in front of your face that, that typically it's, it's not always worth it to run for. Now, so a good example here, right? So, you know, being efficient and productive does not lead to promotion. It's a consensus for popularity. And what you should understand is that consensus for popularity is why it's so important for you to go to those, co uh, those team events, those after work events, that even that you find that are uninteresting, time wasting, being popular is more important than being productive. Now, that's why it's better to job hop. If you're the type of person that want to make more money and not play the popularity game, it's best to do work for a company three to four three years, I would say maximum, then you job hop to another company, get a pay rise and, and make more money and live life on your terms. So it's better to job hop than pursue promotions to make more money and instead of playing that popularity game. 
You can skip levels of the game, of the corporate game, by job hopping between one and the other every three years, as I say. If you don't like the promotions process internally, uh, typically it does work as a popularity contest. They will have, basically, say you're a particular level, say you're a vice president and you want to make it to executive director, the level above, they will ask all the executive directors in meetings that you're not involved in, oh, what's your opinion of the, this vice president that we want to promote or that we're considering promoting? And based on that popularity among the level above you, that's how they'll promote you. So it's, it's kind of a, say it's not really based on your ability. You know, you can do a good job and if you're not popular with the people in one level above you, then you're not going to succeed, right? And um, you've got to play all those internal politics and I know people who would be, how can I say it, quite nice, well, I don't know how to describe it, very arrogant people who'd be inefficient and not very good at their job. And they would get promoted at some of those investment banks I mentioned. Um, and they would be very unpopular with people at their own level. But because they sucked up so much to people one level above, they get promoted quite quickly. And um, they would do things like, you know, use their phone during the day, use their phone, um, you know, at the desk all the time, use their, you know, just scroll through their phone during meetings and get away with things like that. But just because they're favor of the management, they would easily progress, right? And if they suck up to the management and do, and get invited to special work drinks with senior managers, for example, when I was working at Investment Bank in London, We'd get a visit occasionally from a managing director in New York and he'd go on special drinks with some of his favorite junior co-workers and things like that were a bit weird. And, you know, there may have been some kind of rainbow community twink behavior going on there, which I can't get into. But it, it, there was very suspicious, let's just say, workplace relationships between some of the older men and younger men. And, uh, you know. It was a bit weird. It was a bit weird. Certain certain things that were implied. But we'll leave it at that. Now, um, and what they want to do to keep you as a cog in the machine is make sure you're pigeonholed so you can't grow and develop. So you're only good at one very small, narrow thing that they can easily replace with someone new. So you're not important to the company. And then also your career growth. In order to push for your career growth, you have to be able to branch out and do different things and not let someone pigeonhole you. So you've got more of a stable income. And they just want you to do a very small part that you're assigned to and, and not let you get involved in other things. So it's very challenging for you to grow and develop stability in your career when you're treated like a cog in a machine. That's why you shouldn't care too much about your work and understand it is kind of fake. And all you need to do is do that one little bit of work you have to do, be fake nice with people, and that's how you succeed. Because you say like, wow, that's not optimal. That's not optimal. It's not supposed to be optimal. That's the whole point. It's supposed to be just something that keeps the gears running. So they go into this other place and say, wow, you know, the, I, I, can, I can fix this in the finance department. The finance department doesn't want you there. They have their own career. They're doing their little part. They don't want to get the optimal solution, even if they say a thousand times to Sunday that they want this. They don't. So you're brought into a role, do that role. That role is not that difficult. Most of the studies show that, that the average person gets about two to four hours of productive work a day. That's it. And the rest, so you can use that data for your advantage. You can use that data to know that two to four hours of your work is probably all you're going to get that's productive. Okay, that gives you an all. So there you go, right? So as I say, we're, we're both coming from an experienced perspective, right? It's important to like save yourself and not save the company. You don't think, oh, I can save the company by being more efficient and, and things like that. That's just not going to work. Understand what, what's expected of your role, what small part is that, how you can kind of grind it away each day to make more money, save more money, keep your head low uh, and kind of not get involved in problems and just get that done. As I mentioned in one of my other recent videos, every department is like a mini empire. And in those empires, they have inefficiencies, politics, favoritism, nepotism, DEI hires, feminism, favoritism to whatever woman's popular with some other co-workers, what junior male is popular with the some male manager, things like that. So all those types of things have, have completely distorted the workplace environment. It's bloated, it's inefficient, it's suboptimal, it's meant to be that way. And the key point he mentioned here is something that I've seen many times that I've said in my videos too, is you can only do about four hours, two to four hours, I would say four to six hours, really focused, intense mental capacity work. You can scroll through emails for endless hours. You can do pointless messages for endless hours, but the actual real focused work, 
you can do four to six hours a day. I mean, beyond that, your, your mental capacity is gonna drop. You're gonna end up picking easier work to do, like just organizing your emails. But like I said, to focus, the, the work hours shouldn't be eight hours. If you, at least half the work day is inefficiencies. It's pointless meetings, it's pointless chit chat, it's time wasting inefficiencies. There's only four hours of work you can do maybe a day, right? So that's why you need to just focus on doing your small part, playing your part and just moving on to another company for a pay rise. What you need to do occasionally, well, in some cases, if you want to succeed, is understand who are the needle movers, who are the people who really make the difference, who are the popularity people, who are the people who can help you get a promotion. And then typically there's a lot of sucking up that is needed for you to do to get that promotion. And a lot of times I'd recommend don't fight for a promotion unless they naturally... Uh, like you and uh, they they have some favoritism to you because they think you're you, they you fit with the the workplace culture more than being productive. They like you in the workplace culture, then they'll consider putting you up for a promotion, right? A lot of times it is nepotism and favoritism, and you can't really outwork that. You can't use your competency to outwork this type of really inefficient system. You know, being a hardworking employee is not going to outweigh whoever's the most favorite person of management. They'll probably get promoted over you. Job. And oh, my God, so many people think they're doing a great job and they're not. And if you can see it, it's annoying. My advice is to care less about the, 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 the perfect or even the good solution and just go with the mediocre solution. If you can't do this, find something else to do. Because you're going to be constantly frustrated. You're going to be constantly banging up against uh, the, the, the weight of that organization. And it is a, a, a totalitarian regime. We voluntarily put ourselves into this position because there are they're not that many alternatives. And there are not that many alternatives that we've actually seen that work. But, you know, capitalism, you know, that is what we do now. So it's annoying, it's not fun, but if you care a bit less, your stress level goes down and you can, you can spend that time looking for the next job that you're gonna do. So it's important to care less and I understand why it's fr frustrating because I don't mind caring less about the work, but I care about making more money, right? I don't care that much about the work anyway, right? Even if you tell me to care less. What I do care about is actually making more money. So if you're gonna put me in a position where working hard is not gonna help me succeed, what's gonna help me succeed? Sucking up to management? I don't like sucking up to people. Playing along with feminism, liberalism, woke ideology, DEI, things like that. I don't wanna do that, right? I don't, like, I, I don't mind working hard and putting in the effort, but this is what you realize. Often average is better than great, right? So it's better to be average, to be an average working employee and um, doing that rather than being a great employee, right? You should be great in pursuing your personal life goals, your health, your wealth, your side income, your side businesses, things like that. And think about your options outside the system or pursuing an option outside the system, even if it is working your day job and saving up your money to care less and to quit. The important thing here is not to be a dumb donkey, right? And a dumb donkey is someone who works in corporate America. And some of you may be that. Let me know in the comments if you're a dumb donkey and why do you think that is. So a dumb donkey would be someone who works hard in corporate America and they think they're gonna succeed and they care too much, but they don't, never, they don't really succeed that much. When I work, I constantly tell myself you know, to care about myself and my own goals, but don't care about the work too much. Um, there's a quote out there about you know, working harder on yourself than doing your job, right? You should focus on your own personal goals rather than the job itself. And you should also ask yourself whether you want the promotion because you might get a five, 10% pay rise, but you might get a 50% increase in effort you need to exert and manage people you need to manage. And the people you're managing will probably be like you. They don't really want to do the work either. So, you know, a you know, significant proportion of your job is just nonsense bureaucracy, right? And BS company politics. So that's another reason why you should care less about your work and realize it's kind of pointless. And you know, all the reports and complex work you're doing, it'll just get stored away in some kind of file and it won't matter, f matter five years from now. The number one thing for every big company, any big organization is to preserve their hierarchy, right? The hierarchy is so important. Preserving the hierarchy is more important than efficiency, right? So if you're a junior employee, you come in with a super efficient way of doing things, but it undermines someone who's in a senior role and maybe 
the, your efficient solution would cut their team in half because they don't need half the people because you can do it through a, uh, an, an Excel macro, through using a Python machine learning programming. They don't want that, right? They want people to maintain the hierarchy, keep certain p people in positions of power and keep their ability to control people because more than money, corporations, as I'm sure you've all seen in recent years, it's all about controlling people's freedom, their ability to move, their ability to speak freely, their ability to be financially free from the sick system. So that's an important thing to consider. And I realized just a long time ago that you just do my job and go home. That's a better option than overextending myself and not getting paid sufficiently for overextending myself. And in certain ways, I wouldn't say I necessarily took a demotion, but in times of my career, I have taken a sidestep where for my mental health and for my freedom, it's better to take a sidestep so I have more time to focus on other income sources, other life goals, because there's no point staying in a super intense, long hours type of work role where I have all this extra work I'm doing, not getting paid that much extra for it. And I'm, and I'm all my free time is being dedicated to that pointless job. So what you need to do is optimize your cog, right? Your small part in the system and really focus on how you can make your small piece of work good. So you get paid more, optimize your cog, your particular part of the work, and you should give less of a fuck about what else is going on in the entire system, how inefficient it is and everything else, right? And where needed, you know, make strategic alliances and friendships at work. I wouldn't say friends, I would say strategic alliances that really benefit you um, because, you know, your coworkers are not your friends, but keeping up to date with what's going on in the rest of the machine. If you are a cog in a machine, everyone else is a cog. What's going on over there? Keeping your eye on what's going on is very important. And that's what really all it comes down to if you wanna succeed in the corporate environment. It comes down to one simple thing. You're working in a fake corporate culture. You need to care less about the work. You need to be strategic about maneuvering through that work environment and only focus on prioritizing and doing a good quality job for your particular small cog in that machine and care less about whether the entire system is functioning or not. I hope you found that video helpful. I have, I am someone who's worked at some of these top companies, as I mentioned before, and I offer a career advice service to help you navigate through those difficult corporate environments, right? So if you want to speak with me directly, there's a link in the description. I'll help you plan your career, help you with your CVs, interviews, resumes, um, LinkedIn profiles, help you develop a sustainable career path and a path to financial freedom so you can live free and independent of this system. So thanks for listening, two recommended videos on your screen right now, and I'll see you next time.